I'm, I'm going to leave the floor open for questions. I think I've seen someone ask two questions here. So please, if you have any question, you can uh, use the raise hand function and I will ask you to unmute yourself and ask. Uh, how do you cope with the monster of piracy in Nigeria and then about cybercrime and other legal issues? That's the first question. And the second question, how do you cope with increased competition and the lack of government support? All right. Um, how do you cope with the, um, the monster of piracy? Well, I think that monster has gradually been defeated. Um, initial, um, first phase, um, the, the cinemas have invested in a better technology um, in terms of um, the formats with which they, they distribute um, the content, right? So um, I think they've, they've aligned themselves with international standards, so it's more difficult for people to um, pull out the content. Now, also with the coming of platforms, um, um, it's as if piracy is more like it's getting to the minimum because once it comes out on the platform, you've, you've received your money. Yet they paid it for you, and the platform wants everybody to watch. So it now becomes a problem of the platform if somebody's downloading and distributing. So technically, the platform has, they've, they've really um, come to provide soccer for investors in terms of bullish or privacy. But for those that um, will be making content for cinemas, right? You want to go to the cinema because some people go to cinemas first and then take to platform. Um, for those that will be doing that, um, I think the cinema must also have put also a layer of security in terms of how they distribute those content. It's a format in which, in which the video comes out that is difficult to, it's kind of decrypted. It's difficult to, um, um, to to hack and all of that. So, yeah, so I think <clears throat> compared to where the industry was some years back, it's a much better place. Then how do you cope with increased um, competition and the lack of government support? Um, well, I will not say there's a lack of government support um, because the government is beginning to realize I think it's the second highest employer of labor in Nigeria the entertainment industry and so the government is beginning to give it attention yes they could do so much more number one like uh, passing a bill that protects the entire industry i i understand that, that bill has been in the house for some time now um also um number two creating an enabling environment um in terms of filming for instance now filming in lagos you have to deal with their uh, boys and all of those many issues um yeah, mm -hmm. so um, I think we've also learned how to uh, how to how to adapt, how to adjust. And so um, we factor in all of these components in our budget, right? So um, 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 it just tends to increase our costs. But of course, if you're a smart investor, you know that you're going to spend this for this, and then you are you are setting it um, against the expected profit, so you don't um, 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 run aground. So yeah. So I think um, um, smart people are learning how to make it work um, and this new style as this, um, part of the challenges that also that is experienced in the industry is the issue of location, right? Filming location. Um, um, and recently we're filming Lagos and we needed to film on the, on the highway, the expressway. Um, for those of us that know Lagos and Lekki, <coughs> that Lekki the expressway. And we needed to, it's more like a, it's, it's a suicide attempt, somebody jumping up the bridge. But we need to simulate that. So we're going to bring heavy equipment, we're going to block a portion of the road. So we send this open right to the Lagos State um, arm of government. It's a private, public, so I'm sure we all know the two gates. Who that managed two gates, they also manage that road. We see it and they, they told us what ridiculous was. And I'm like, are, are, you, are you guys from here? <laughs> If we will, you are a business. Yes. Of course, they didn't agree. Eventually, we had to get us coming from the states. We just wanted to shoot. And eventually, they didn't end anything because we shot what we wanted to shoot. They didn't end um, much. So, we found a way to, within the legal framework, because what we did was still legal, um, um, to to make it, we found a way to make it make it work. And I think it's working. But, of course, 
need more advocacy to see that. Um, for instance, we have a fame village. Um, because with the fame village, some of these spaces we already exist there. And you just come in and you have the space to do um, what you need. need more studios and all that. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any other question? Anyone in the call? If you do, you can just unmute yourself and ask. Okay, so you know, while we're waiting for that, I have a question here. Other than the you know, general challenges previously known with the field, I mean, a lot of times growing up and uh, in times past, one of the things that uh, is associated kind of with uh, people in the movie industry, especially actors, is the fact that it's very difficult for them to keep stable relationships and things like that. But we're beginning to see new uh, things happening in the industry now. I would say, let me speak for the YouTube platform because I'm a bit more familiar with that. And I've noticed that you see 100% Igbo movies, 100% I mean, Igbo cast, 100% every single person is evil and things like that have i've noticed that a lot of times so now i take my time to actually check the cast and see who is there and i've noticed that this is becoming very very common uh what's going on and what do you think this mean for someone a new entrant yeah who is still trying to find Okay, yeah, I think it means the, the industry is expanding. Um, um, it's becoming a bit also specialized. Um, it is not new. We've always had the Yoruba Nollywood. We've had the Kanyewood, which is the Hausa. And we have the, um, I don't know what the name to call it, Igbo content, right? Yes. Specifically for that content. Now, it is growing and it's going to keep growing because um, some of the filmmakers sometimes they are targeting um, for instance if you want to target an award in maybe like the Oscars language content local language content is a factor right there's a percentage of local language that has to be embedded in that story for you to be even to be nominated um, for such awards so yeah um, I think the industry is expanding um, some of those contents now are being produced on a on a on a bigger scale, high budget for platform, and um, um, a huge portion of the, of the film will be in a particular language. Then uh, to respond to the aspect of challenges, um, okay, I would say probably the more you 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 you're trying to imply the moral challenge of the industry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so um, yeah, I think there are challenges, um, especially if one to keep. From the angle and the context of this conversation, let's say I'm a parent and my child wants to go into Phoenix. Ah, child, you don't love that way. That is the end. <laughs> but well, not not exact, absolutely not. Um, I have, I have, I, for instance, now I'm a filmmaker. Um, I'm a producer. And I think it's also embedded in the value system that you put in your child, the value system that you carry as a person. I'm happily married with three kids. And by God's grace, I'm going to remain married for the rest of my life to the same woman. Um, also, um, I have actors that... Um, I have actors that are morally sound, right? But sometimes we tend to see and hear the negative the negative parts of, um, of the story more. Um, generally, divorce rates in the world globally has risen. So, of course, the industry will have its own share. Of that, yeah. So, um, in terms of in terms of that, I think if there are people in the space that, for instance, now Motala is happily married. Motala is one of the big names um, in the industry. Um, happily married with um, with the kids, and her husband. And she flaunts her husband all over the Now, I also know other actors that keep their relationship relationships away from the media. Right? Uh, one of the actors that I manage, you can't even know she's, unfortunately she's divorced and I don't think it has anything to do with being in the film space. It's just in work out. But you cannot know who her kids are, you don't know who else. So she has kept herself private, but she's still a public figure. 
so um so if you get the right training on what to do what not to do how to comport yourself um you understand the reality of this aspect it's all about them um, training you prepare for the journey ahead that are the expenses you're going to have and the kind of relationship you want to keep once you want to avoid um, i think you'll be in a, you'll be in a safe space now on the positive end it gives you a lot of influence right so if you are somebody that wants to influence people you just have the, the opportunity to influence people positively so so why not look at it from the positive angle that i come into the space instead of being compromised i begin to get people to do what is right and personally i've seen it in my own space right people now see that oh really you can take this approach ah really i i can go home to my wife oh really and yeah so, so uh, thank you yes you have and then uh how are movie cast put together all right so movie cast uh, put together so well it starts from the story number one you have a script you have a story and um um, once you have the story, there are two factors that are linked into it. There's the technical side and the business side. Excuse me. So usually you have a casting director, casting director. Sometimes you don't have. Sometimes the director technically takes the lead on that conversation. Sometimes the um, investor is also involved. The producer is also involved. Because the producer and the executive producer, they are looking at the business aspect. But which face can sell this film? The director is looking at person, the character, the actor that can deliver my lines. The producer is looking at, by the time she finishes, or he finishes delivering the line, and the film does the same. We want our money back. So we try and strike that balance um, to cast in a way that um, the story is well told. You are having the best character that fits into the story. And also, in a way, from a business point of view, you. I'm sure you all admit that once you there's a, a face that you see in a movie. Um, can you hear me? Um, I'm yes. breaking. We can hear you. Okay. Um, you are okay. There's a face. There's a face you see in a movie, and then bam, you click to watch. <laughs> Get. For instance, now you see a movie and you see. For me, for instance, if I see Dwayne Johnson, oh, this will be a good movie. So, so sometimes um, there are actors that are, that are a bit commercial, right? They sell, um, they drive, they, they, they pull the traffic. Uh, sometimes we we'll also go and look at your your social media following, um, how many people you have, what influence you command in the space. Because I know that if you have, for instance, six million people following, definitely a number of those people will come and see a movie that you feature because they are your followers. So, and that's why. Our just try to keep themselves relevant on the social media space um, to maintain their following and keep that. So all of these factors come together. But largely, largely, um, the story helps to tell us the right cast. Um, and when you're casting, you're casting to be able to maintain some form of balance. So if, for instance, now you have a lead actor, and the lead actor is supposed to have a younger sister. So you are trying to look for a lookalike, right, for the younger sister. You don't want to take somebody that is off. So that now they meet, so they now identify and all the actors, there's a child. The child will have to look like, so we now do all this auditioning and we're looking at all of these elements. Apart from the fact that you can act, we're lying with needs of the story. We're lying with um, some of the other components that come to whoever they have chosen as a child. Um, So, are these characters usually invited, or can somebody present themselves to say I'm interested? Yeah, so um, both happens. Um, there are calls for auditions, the auditioning that happen. You can put yourself in um, uh, as many times as possible. Um, don't get discouraged because sometimes we tell you no, and they're not telling you no because you do not, you're not good, right? So that's one, one something that you can get right. Um, sometimes the no is because you don't fit into the profile of what is being what they're looking for, right? For instance, you might just be too tall. Um, uh, you don't want a, a character's younger sister, younger brother, you not be the bigger person. So you just feel like, oh, okay, if we have this person in mind for the lead, whatever. So, so um, call for auditions, you put yourself out. Um, 
um, take advantage of network and relationships, right? Um, take smaller roles, develop your real um, 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 smaller roles like um, what they call worker pass. Um, um, or you just appear in a scene, and um, with that, you are beginning to develop some form of um, profile. Those ones are very easy to get, and um, you are paid a stipend for that. Um, um, then, as you grow, you are not called, right? You know, you get to that we're not called. You have the second script. We want you for this role. Do not be want to consider. No, I, 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 I don't think I want to do this. I, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do it all over. It's, it's all, it's all a journey. We have to get it. Okay, thank you. Uh, my last question will be about getting trained. You have uh, repeatedly mentioned that. Yes, which I agree with. Um, considering the fact that many of our, audi- I mean, the all the members of our audience are people who are interested in going abroad to study. So I would like you to recommend, is there, are there schools or training centers for this particular purpose in Nigeria? And if someone is going abroad to study, what kind of courses do you recommend for them to study? Excuse me. All right, yeah. Um, so, um, definitely there are courses, I think. I think arrows will be in a better position. Don't know. <laughs> so, to advise on on those specific um, institutions that offer some of those courses, that the institutions that offer um, these specialized courses, you can go in and study production and the business of film. You can go and study directing um, abroad. You have the New York Film School. You have, um, excuse me, you have all of these um, high-profile um, institutions that offer this as a course. So you can go and study to become a director of photography, right? Um, you can go and study sound. You can go and study light as a specialty. You can go and study um, costume and, and uh, makeup. Uh, okay, there's one department I didn't mention, which is the arts, 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 arts director, right? Um, um, they are in charge of um, the um, what I now? set design, right? To make up the set. And so in that department, you have carpenters, you have painters, you have, um, of course, the art director is, is, is like he's looking at the entire production from an artistic point of view. What does he want people to see from the lens of the camera? So when you're looking, so you come into a house, what do you want the viewer to experience as we enter, as the camera enters this house? So that now defines the elements you put, right? Sometimes you want to put the painting, Give it a feel. You want to put the picture of um, the owner of the house. Sometimes you say, "No, you don't need picture. This this character is not that loud. It's not the kind of person that on the wall." But, so that is in itself is a special. Thing. So and all of this, there are institutions, specialized institutions that um, provide this training. And if that's the direction you want to go, come in as an expert in the field. Um, I think Arush will definitely guide you on that. Um, um, for locally in Nigeria, yes, the institutions that um, that um, provide those training. Um, one of them, Daryl. Daryl, for instance, brings in Hollywood. Um, Hollywood, um, uh, what's it called? Um, me. Hollywood personnel to come and train Nigerians, right? And they bring in people that have veterans in the field in Hollywood. And they come to Nigeria and organize um, some of these trainings. Um, and knowledge. So institutions like that. Uh, sorry, so I, well, I didn't get the name. search for them online. But of course, Del York, Del York, D-E-L-Y-Y-K-R-K. I think the Lagos State government works L Del York, D-E-L-Y-O, yes, York, Y-O-R-K. Oh, okay. Yeah, it used to be, it used to be New York, I think it was an affiliation with the New York um, Film Institute. Um, okay, somebody has. Um, uh, yes, that's it. De- Delio. Um, so, so you have Delio. They, they recently worked with the Lagos State Government to train a couple of um, um, young people in Lagos um, um, in filmmaking. So, we train in all of this department. Of course. So, you also have an NT- NTA Film School. Um, I know NTA. that. Um, yes. I know that I'm um, yeah. just. I know that um, some of um, the colleagues 
Bates and cinematographers, guys that are doing, uh, uh, for instance, Casey. Casey, Casey was involved in the shoot with Beyonce. Um, um, and he finished from NTFM school. Uh, um, um, so um, we have Okuta, we have a couple of these guys that came out from NTFM school. I think they are doing, they are doing good. So you have all of this institution. Uh, so NTA is one institution that provides across board training locally. Um, all over. But of course, if you can get some international um, and certification, better because what is happening now is that the industry is somehow unified, right? Um, um, where we're having a conversation that very soon in the future, as we begin, like somebody spoke about, as we begin to have better policies, um, there are productions that will be coming to Nigeria from Hollywood, right? Um, for those of us that have seen Woman King, Woman King, for instance, that was not shot in Nigeria because. I heard, well, I don't know how true, but I heard that um, it has something to do with the, the, the way we tax coming here to film. The tax rates are very, very high. So we discourage them. But of course, Nigeria is like the, the, the capital of Phoenix in Africa. The South Africa also is a very solid industry. Um, um, in terms of quality, I think they have solid outputs. But in terms of Storytelling, but they are just starting. Yeah. So our story, our stories have soul, we have you know, this thing, all that. So there's a whole um, range of opportunities out once you have the right um, set of teachings. And for those that probably you already okay, you want to pursue a BSc in some communication fields, uh, maybe mass communication. And all of that. You, know, you can just do those general courses that are somewhat related in case you feel that you're taking a risk, right? If it doesn't work out, you jump and pursue your mass communication. Um, for those that are going in that space, there are courses you can take, short courses that are related to that are related to what you want to do. They are related to what you want to do. Sorry about that. Sorry, I had to mute. Somebody can. That's okay. To arrest me. my daughter. Um, <laughs> she was demanding for her, her fundamental rights. So, <laughs> so yeah. Um, so, all of that. Um, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we, we are closing now, and uh, I'm closing with another question. I have, I'm thinking, I'm just. Uh, using that as an using myself as an example, I'm thinking of investing. What's the minimum amount I can be imagining in my mind? Oh, okay. So <laughs> it, it depends. Now, um, it depends on what you want to invest for. If you want to invest for a platform, um, cinema, um, you are. And depends on the grade of the production, the kind of people you want to hire and all that. So you can see from 50 million up to about 300 million. Right? So, yeah, that is an error. Um, if you want to invest, um, one would do for content for YouTube, for instance, you can do 2 million, 3 million, 5 million, there about. Depends on the, um, the cast you want to bring um, on board. Because those products are a bit more cheaper. Uh, um, 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 if you want to also do low budget, low budget for a platform, you can also do between that five million and co. But of course, um, um, you don't want to you want to invest well enough to guarantee the kind of revenue you want to generate. And all that. So. Um, um, Usually in composition like that, for me, for the kind of productions I do, I can speak them. So but when it comes to um, other other um, layers of the industry, I'll just bring somebody that in that space to advise on, um, on the budget element. But, but primarily, the story also determines your budget. Because what we do is that, um, just to give some perspective, once the script comes, the script, and we lock the script. When we say lock the script, it means we have all agreed that okay, the story is right. We don't know the edit and all that. We now don't do what we call the script. So 
the skin breakdown is a process where you break down every scene by scene. What are all the elements you need? You need a car, you need this particular house, you need them, um, you have the props also, the car is a prop, the actor is going to use a knife in this scene, he's going to use a um, bulldozer in this scene. So, so you break down all of the elements that are required. Number of cars, you also have extras in some scene, maybe you're filming a church, your audience, right? Maybe 200 people will sit there. Now all of those people need to be paid. They need to be hired as, um, we call them extras. So you have your speaking and non-speaking. The extras you need to be hired and you need to be paid. Now, by that, you do all of those breakdowns. That now accumulates to give you the cost of it. Because you now know, okay, we need X, Y, Z number of houses. This is what it costs to get to these houses. We need X, Y, Z number of cars. This is what it costs to get these cars. We need X, Y, Z actors. This is what it costs. Then we arrive at the project. Right? So, um, um, so that is usually a standard uh, professional process. And like I said, so as you go professional, because not too many producers go on this. Some people are just producers by Ah, my name is on the film. But the industry now is looking for experts that are trained, that understand the process of production step by step. And so um, I'm a bit fortunate because I have a background in content. I have a background in business, right? And then I'm a creative person. So it's easier for me to run through the entire process. Um, and then with the training again. So, um, 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 so yeah, basically that. Okay, thank you very much for sharing with us. Thank you. Uh, I hope everyone on the call and those who spoke with me earlier would have taken something uh, beneficial from the things you shared with us today. And uh, while I want to say thank you for taking the time to be on the program, I know that time is money and I know everyone is mindful of money these days. So if we see people who are still willing to you know, share from what they have with the public. It's something commendable. I really appreciate you taking out this time. Thank you very much. And uh, maybe in the future, if we have anyone who needs a little bit more uh, on this and they are serious minded, like you said, we will definitely reach out to you to ask for help. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you everyone who is on the call. Uh, oh, sorry, I was told that there is a question from someone. Sorry about that. Who is that, okay, please? Fine. Who is who is the person with the question? So thank you very much again for being here and uh, closing. Please let's not forget the opening text that we need to attend to for those who are still thinking about going this year or early next year. And then uh, next webinar, let's not forget professional roundtable with a well engineer. And then uh, we'll have a university guest and we're also going to be discussing funding. I think that's one of the key uh, areas of interest for everyone. And if your question is not addressed and you still have questions, please go ahead and send a message to Arrows Education and uh, someone will definitely reach out to you to talk with you. This is uh, something that came to my mind when I was uh, trying to prepare for today's meeting. During the week, I had calls from a few people who kept asking me, do you think I should? Do you think it's worth it? Do you think if I put my head out, do you think that would I will not give up at the end of the day and fail. And the answer that I kept giving to them came back to me as I was preparing for this meeting. If you observe the field, if wind, you will not sow. If you, you know, regard the weather, and I decided that's going to be my closing for us today. The meaning of that is, you can see it there. If you are waiting for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. And that's something that I think you can take away from this. If you have anything in mind, please go ahead. Take a step towards the realization. You want to go abroad, you want to go study, take a step towards making that dream come. Do something. With it. Don't wait till everything is perfect because it will never happen. So thank you very much once again. I look forward to seeing you. 
next uh, webinar. That will be on the 3rd of June, Saturday, same time, same place on Zoom. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your weekend.